Shut up and don't tell me how to do things I'm not saying that I'm special, I'm just unique I am marching to my own beat Mine's my playground, but it's really not amusing Come out back and play, I'll show you where I keep my moves The person that inspired me the most like was uh, Robert Easter. I grew up with Robert Easter and everything, you know, in the Amis. And then seeing him on TV while I was in prison, I was like, what? Like, that turned me up. And every day I started training after that. I was in a show box within a year of me coming home from prison and on TV. And like, motherfuckers started hitting me then, like, oh, like, you really doing what you said you're gonna do now? They see me on, you know what I mean? Now they, they, my DMs going crazy because they like, you guys like, damn, bro, you really, uh, you made it, you da da da, you know what I'm saying? I've been knew I was gonna make it regardless. I've been doing this since I was five years old. You know, I took some showbox fights early in my career that, you know, people would have never took. You know, I was seven and zero at the time. I fought a guy, Samuel T. He was beating a lot of prospects on showbox. And he was 12 and 1 at the time and smoked, went in there, did Showtime took a liking to me. The promoter, you know, he looked me up, he called me back, he called me like, hey, would you be interested in fighting Ivan Branch? I didn't know who Ivan was. Cleveland, actual Cleveland, never had a champion. I got a lot of kids, a lot of a lot of people that's looking up to me that's dependent on me to Definitely life changing for me and my family, my team. I've been preparing, you rappers don't scare me. Don't do it for fame, no, my kind is a rarity. Music is therapy, burdens I'm carrying. Emotion is raw, got no problem sharing. Y'all rapping for likes and you quit and get clarity. Your record's embarrassing. You don't compare to me, better be aware that you better be wearing me. Gift is a curse that I'm not even swearing. Okay. Well, listeners, we've got Montana Love in the booth right now. Coming off the uh, biggest win of his career, I would say. So, uh, do you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Big time, man. I saw, so I was watching the fights. You know, this is, the fights are at a hellacious time for us over here in Amsterdam. Like, mm -hmm. gotta stay up, gotta find my moments to take naps sometimes. And then I, like, started watching your fight, talking mm -hmm. to my friends, you know, my boys in, in Canada. And yeah, they were like, man, I was like, shit, man, every round, round by round, I couldn't go to sleep. Was, this is the best fight on the card. And then I had to finish the whole thing and stayed <laughs> up all night to like to watch all of them so yeah man so tell me you you were signed with uh showtime before right because your previous fights were were on showtime as well right uh yeah i fought on showtime um uh what three other times before that um but that was like the biggest card i was on mm -hmm. um biggest fight in my career and uh definitely like you know How'd you get approached for this card, by the way? Because it's a huge opportunity, of course, a massive pay-per-view. I don't know if the numbers were out yet, but yeah. Um. So, so the thing was with this fight, what happened was, uh, I found out, you know, at first, you know, I was gonna get on the card, mm -hmm. like regardless, you know what I mean? Just, just cause, you know, I was, re you know, I had talked to Showtime and everything, you know, I was trying to get me on the card. But once I found out it was coming. It was coming to Cleveland. No, listen, no, 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 I'm lying. Originally, I was supposed to fight in Dubai, back in Dubai, right? Damn, okay. Yeah. Uh, I fought in Dubai. I fought in Dubai in my fight before before this one. Yeah. And I was supposed to be getting ready to fight back in Dubai, but then I found out the card was coming to Cleveland. So I called Showtime and, you know, um, immediately, like, hey, you know, I'm trying to get on this card, da, da, da. They was like, yeah, no doubt. Like, for sure. We got you. Just hold on. Mm hmm so they contacted the promoter of the cars and whatnot. Um, you know, they checked in with that. And then um, and then they called me back. The promoter, you know, he looked me up. He called me back. They called me like, hey, would you be interested in fighting Ivan Branch? I didn't know who Ivan was. I never, like, I don't really follow or watch too many yeah. other fighters or anything. But I'm like, I'm just like, yeah, like, I don't give a, yeah, come on. You know what I mean? I didn't even look him up. I just said, yeah, immediately. Like, let's do it. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, that's like, okay, cool. You know, you know, they're like, let, let's make sure I even take the fight. This one, I even was still in Russia. He just getting back in town. They gave him a few days. Talked to his team. His team took the fight, like, you know what I mean? Almost immediately as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, shit was locked in. So, you know, we just discussed numbers and everything like that. But, you know, everything was locked in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, you know, for me, it's the other way around, man. I, I knew Ivan Branchik. I didn't know Montana Love. No, yeah, yeah. Now I forgot about that guy. You know, this is this is the guy right here. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. I But, appreciate it. Yeah, man. I was... um, The 
the finish did you th- do you think it was gonna go that way like because you know he's a he has a come forward style and you know uh it was definitely a, a banger i mean you both got rocked um and um did you think you were gonna get the finish though because this guy is at that point like two yeah. two losses on his record to i think honest, one of them was a finish right yeah to be honest with you yeah to be honest with you um like our plan was to stop them like in late in the rounds you yeah. know what i mean like our plan was to move box get him frustrated get him just hit you know he we knew he was kind of a, a little slow he wasn't gonna be able to hit us so and one thing like i'm big on defense i really got pretty i got pretty good defense you know what yeah, i mean yeah. and legs and whatnot so thing was to just move box him you know what i mean get some of the steam off his punches because mm-hmm. like you know people i've been hearing a lot of critic you know people getting on me about oh you showboat, you had him hurt early in the fight, you could have got, no, at the end of the day, we know he's still dangerous, even yeah. though it's early, he hurt, but he still was dangerous, he still had his, you know what I mean, he was still fresh, mm-hmm. so with that being said, you know, the showboat and everything was just to, for that pause, so I wouldn't just jump run into nothing, or, right. you know what I mean, it just yeah. give me that split second to, to, to you know what I mean, it's yeah. all calculated, you get what I'm saying, yeah. so, uh, you know, I just stuck to our game plan and, and, and like, you know, we was looking to get him late in rounds. We knew we was going to land a shot. He don't have very much defense. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's very, you know, he's been down like 13 times, 12 times in his career before. You know what I mean? So yes, it's it was like, possible to get him we down. knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we knew we was going to get him. It's just a matter of finding that right timing. And uh, all like from earlier in the fight, I was trying to play. I was placing the uppercut. I was starting to find a home for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, once I seen him getting frustrated, he started getting desperate. You know, he started throwing hard shots. He started grunting when he was missing, like, mm-hmm. like grunting when he was missing shots. Mm-hmm. And then he went from he went from cutting me off to start following me. And once I picked that up, that's how he was able to run him right into the shot. Yeah, I was just looking at that finish again. Let's see, like, how, how it was set up. It was more like a defensive kind of uh, counter. You know what I mean? Like, it's always yeah, like yeah. a couple of steps back. And at the moment, he thought you were going to take one more step back. I think you... You went in with a with the uppercut. That was beautiful. Yeah, so I, I think like I was gonna step to my right. I stepped to my right first, like I was about uh-huh. to go to the right. And then he was throwing a jab, and that's when I had stepped back and I slipped up under the jab and came right through Ooh. with the shot. Yeah. Perfect. Beautiful man. Yeah. No, uh that was so big moment to your career. So uh, well how how did it uh change your life right now? Oh yeah, it, it changed, man. You know, we got um a big very big, big announcement coming soon. Um, I just, you know, I can't reveal anything yet right now, but it's, you know, it's this this deal and things we got going on right now is amazing. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is definitely life changing for me and my family, my team. And yeah, it was amazing. Man. Well, so one of the reasons I like to have fighters on, and we, we don't strictly have fighters on, we do have a lot of fighters on, but it's um, because the business is very it's 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 a sport that's very entrepreneurial you got to be entrepreneurial to really survive i think unless you like Absolutely. get the backing of the the promotions and everything you know um yeah the paychecks aren't coming yeah. all the time and you also got to work hard to get to the big paychecks so you strike me as someone where you got a business um yeah so what's in the back of your mind in terms of, i mean you're very young in your career still but what's in the back of your mind you're already thinking about the future after fighting and how you save your money up and all that uh, see, like right now, I own two businesses. I have a mobile spa. I have a nail salon. My nail salon I'm going on the second year being open. Um, and you know, here in my hometown, like I'm, I'm very like anything I pretty much touch here is gold. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. just building, I own two, I own two houses as well, two properties. So I've been in real estate as well. So yep. it's just uh, really just um, you know, just it, right now, I just invest. Like I don't, I don't really. I don't go out. I don't mm. blow money on, you know what I mean? I'm really, yeah. I, I save, I save well. And, and like I say, like, I'm just putting in some, my, my nails, I already have the businesses going. You know what I mean? I went to school. I learned my business inside out. Like I know everything about my business and everything. So, you know, it's, you know, just honestly, I, I like the field that I'm in right now. Did you start, did you start the business before uh, the career started flourishing or before? So I didn't, uh, I started my business early, very early, early in my career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. before so you really knew you 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 would you were gonna make it. 
As a I knew I was gonna. I've been knew I was. I've been knew I was gonna make it. Regardless, yeah. I've been doing this since I was five years old. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a ten-time national amateur champion. Like I knew I was gonna make it. Like that's what I'm doing it for. Yeah. But uh, well, you know, my my plan, my plan, just you know, I just stuck to my plan with my career totally, completely. My thing was to stay, stay independent as long as possible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Stay mm-hmm. away from the table as long as possible and get the most out of the situation. I I I I refuse to to uh sign with a promoter or just sign with somebody just to say I was signed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I took I took certain fights, you know what I mean, just betting on myself. Mm-hmm. That's all I did was bet on myself. I said, Oh yeah, I said I just bet it on myself like just with you know what I mean, with just my with my whole career. Mm-hmm. You know, I took some showbox fights early in my career. That you know, people would have never took. You know, I was seven and zero at the time. I fought a guy, Samuel Tia. He was beating a lot of prospects on Showbox, and he was twelve and one at the time and smoked him. Went in there, and then Showtime took a liking into me. They thought I, because Showtime didn't know who I was, so they kicked up. I they, I came in kind of in the same similar situation uh, that I just did in my last fight. Right. They thought Tia was gonna you know wipe me out, and yeah. you know. So that yeah. was supposed to be the guy for them. The other your opponent yeah yeah, yeah that yeah. was supposed to be the, yeah yeah i noticed man like i looked at your um was looking at the record and um you know in boxing there's a big tendency to pad the records and, and such and uh it doesn't seem like you really padded the record at all like really but i mean you have an extensive amateur record i think almost 200 fights right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 187 i think that played um played a big part like did you think coming straight out of the amateurs going pro that the like, you could take anybody you didn't need to pad any records anymore or uh Nah, I just knew, I, honestly, I just knew the route I wanted to go. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Definitely the amateur background played a very big part, very big part. But at the same time, I knew amateur and professional was two totally different things. Right. You're dealing with these horsehair gloves, you know what I mean, with no headgear. It's a whole different feel, you know yeah. what I mean? And I just knew eventually, you know, I was going to have to adapt. That's why you really got to take some solid fights. Some uh, you know what I mean? Some uh, some solid fights early, just so you can be able to to learn how to adjust and get used to yeah. you know getting put in these certain situations. That's a bigger just having risk. that experience. Yeah, 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 it's a bigger risk, but at least now I think now, now they they, they took off. away the headgear off amateurs. I think. Yeah, they did. Yeah, when the yeah. Amis, yeah, they did. Yeah. How do you think that's going to affect? Do you think there's going to be more people going pro quicker, or is it absolutely? Gonna, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, why wouldn't he? Like, why, why, why stay amateur and fight with no headgear and not get paid when I can go pro <laughs> and go get paid? You know what I mean? It just yeah. don't make sense. So, what's your key to uh, to like? Because not everyone can get those paychecks or get paid well to 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 box professionally, right? So, what are you actively doing, sort of, to to set yourself aside from other uh, other fighters, maybe? Because it's not just it, skills alone don't pay the bills, really, and not always. Skills do pay the bills, champ. They do. Skills well, pay but the bills. How many but, skilled? But you saying what do I do? What do I do? Uh, far as aside from far as you know, like what? yeah, aside from having the skills, of, of course, because you're you're sixteen and own one. So let's say sixteen oh, right? Um, yeah. what else are you gonna do to put yourself aside from other people that are in your position, like to to really get a one up on them? Oh, Maybe marketing wise, fights. and yeah. Other. Oh yeah, marketing. Yeah. See, the thing like, is, like. I, I'm already naturally like I'm marking myself. I've been doing that since day one. You know what I mean? And uh, my swag, like my swag alone, just who I am. Like I'm just entertainment regardless. Yeah. And there's not too many fighters that can do or be like how I am. You get what I'm saying? Like I'm just yeah. an entertainer. Um, um, it's just, I don't know. It's a different, all I got to do is be me. That's it. You know what I mean? It ain't well, like I think it's just I in do. you, yeah. Yeah, it's just like it's not, it's not on me. It's in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, naturally, you didn't yeah. really. It wasn't really a marketing stunt, also to 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 wear the the flashy trunks and all that. And you know, because it takes See, a special but, kind but of individual, I think, to start dancing in the ring and you know, I, I have fun like that. Yeah, that, yeah. See, and that's the thing. Like, I like it's that's natural for me. It ain't like something you got to rehearse or yeah. something you got. No, like me just doing, like me just being me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, it's just me being me for real. Oh yeah, that it starts showing, man. Eventually, like if it's if it's fake, it, you know, people are gonna start noticing. Right, and, uh, right. I think um, 
Good man. Like, where do you think that that confidence comes from? Like, when because how how young did you start boxing? Uh, my conf the confidence. You know how did I start boxing? Uh, my mother. My, call your mother. Tell her I'm on a damn call, man. I'm on an uh, interview. Uh, my confidence started with boxing. I mean, I started with boxing. I started boxing. With my um, mother put me in the gym when I was five years old. Mm. Uh, me and my brothers and them, we used to, um, you know, fight and slap box and everything all the time. And, yep. You know, my, my father died when I was three. So, mm. you know, my mother just, she ain't want us in the streets. You know, and she tried to, you know, create a different, a, a, a routine for us. You know what I mean? To steer that energy elsewhere. And, uh, you know, that's how, you know, I, I, I won my first national tournament. Well, my first tournament at eight years old, national tournament at eight years old, too. Won my first belt, took me to Kansas City. And uh, after that, you know, I fell in love with it. Cool, man. And do you think, so she, yeah, of course. So she wanted to uh, maybe have those, the coaches maybe step in and teach you a couple of things as the, as the stand-in father figures maybe. And uh, yeah, is that what it was? Yeah, you said my coaches and them? Yeah, yeah like, so my coach was like, like, my coach was like a grandfather to me, man. His name was Clint Martin. Mm. Uh, he passed away as well, but um, uh, sorry to hear. He was definitely like a yeah. he was definitely like a grandfather to me, you know. And uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from him, just not even only from boxing, but definitely as a man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's definitely um, it played a part for sure. Obviously, like how much of a role did it did the fact that Jake Ball was on the card like play play on you getting on there? Oh, yeah, like Jake, like you know, what I mean, at the end of the day, he had the he had the final say on things. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, Jake, like Jake, is a solid guy, solid dude, man. That's a good dude right there for sure. He uh, yeah, you know, him and his team, they they kept, you know, they kept everything. What? 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 I'm on the phone. We can wait, man. I'm uh, uh, uh yeah. I say he he he's solid guy though. You know what I mean? Solid dude for sure. Turn the corner on him. I obviously you know uh, there's like I don't know what you thought in the beginning like when it first started but you know um I think I think the things that he's doing for fighter pay as well and um just the attention on the sport is 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 a good thing I just think that they just turned them into exhibitions I don't know <laughs> you know unless you're fighting other pro fighter uh, pro pro boxers maybe like turn it into an exhibition but aside from man, that, man I'm gonna be honest with you mm. I'm gonna be honest with you him doing what he's doing is is a, like I agree with like I'm I'm cool with it because on not only you know people get mad they pocket watch it oh he getting paid more than any other so what with that oh yeah you know that, I mean? yeah I don't mind bread, that at all man. you know what I mean yeah but the thing is what I like about it is that the fact that you know what I'm saying this man you know he any anybody getting in that ring putting their life on the line regardless I don't care if it's For sure. a regular guy. Uh, it, it only take one punch to get hit wrong and you know what I'm saying sure. things could change but uh, you know him he bringing different eyes to the sport you know what I mean he got people that have never watched boxing watching boxing now mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying and, and and again that may that give people like me the opportunity you know what I mean That's to what it is. Yeah. catch that eye the people that literally never watched the boxing they to watch him boxing to watch Jake fight but then they seen my fight before Jake fight and they oh who is this guy yeah. Now nah, they become fans. You get what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. So it's 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 actually like I feel like it's good for the sport. It is, man. I have the same with a couple of my boys as well, man. Like they 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 saw you off of that as well. Like they just wanted to see. They were MMA fans. They they wanted to see Tyron knock him out. But yeah, you no, know, I got I got I got a lot of respect for it. There's no like I don't think there's a reason for anyone to not to not give him respect. You know, like they always say, like oh, fight yeah. a real boxer, fight a he fought he fought a UFC champion. <laughs> Multiple right. times. And you, right, still. And then that's he's the a guy. thing. Yeah. This guy never fought UFC, never did any of this. He just no, honestly crazy. just jumped in the ring and say, I want to start doing it. And, and, and trained, learning, yeah. and going through the steps and doing it. I he think actually he's actually doing, doing it. it for, can't get mad at that. No. Three years. Three years long. The guy has all the millions. Still, I think, dedicated himself full time to it. And, I, you know, I can only have respect for that, you know. I don't. Yeah, I don't he gonna, he only gonna get better, man. Just because he wants to get better, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Say so he gonna he gonna continue to grow and get better though for sure and learn from, you know, each fight is a learning experience. You yeah. know, what I mean, each day in the gym is a learning experience, whether it's sparring, training, or whatever. So he gonna, he gonna get better though for sure. 
what's the main moment in your life I think that, that that you really turned around, like turned your life around? There's always this moment where people realize, like, man, there's so much potential in my life. Like, there's so much more. I gotta wake up and do more with it, man. Like, what was that for you? Was there a specific moment? Oh, the moments like that was for me was my mother died and when I was in prison. Yeah, so that that was the that was my bonus right there. Mm. And what was the 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 series of events? That was was it? Which one came first? Was it? So like my mother died, yeah. and then my mother died, and then a couple months later I was on a run, and then a couple months later I went to prison. So it all happened in the same year. Damn. Man. What was happening? Uh, in your life at that moment, like at that point, like to to get you there. So everything, you know, I was in the streets, mm -hmm. and you know, I had a baby at the age of fifteen. Uh, mm. She had it when I was sixteen, so you know, I was moving around early at a young age. So you got to make it happen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And so it was like a said, yeah, yeah. With that being said, that's what I, you know, that I was basically doing and everything, and uh, you know, <laughs> everything come to an end. It got jammed up. You know, I was on the run. My mother passed the cancer, and mm. you know that happened. And yeah. you know, I'm in. I was in prison. My kids come to see me from jail, and I'm like, damn, like, what I'm gonna do? I'm coming home with it. Without a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out, you hear me? Yeah, man. So I had to figure. I had to figure it out. I'm on the phone. Out of necessity. I had to figure it out. Yeah. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I can imagine, like, you have a lot of time, of course, on your hands to 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 think and plot and scheme in prison. Absolutely. What, like, what are some Absolutely. of the, the thought processes that were going on as soon as you got in? And to like, be honest with day? you, uh, when I was uh, when I was uh. Locked up. The person that inspired me the most, like, was uh, Robert Easter. I grew up with Robert Easter and everything, hmm. you know, in the Amis. And then seeing him on TV while I was in prison, I was like, what? Like, that turned me up. And every day I started training after that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, when I come home, I'm going to do this. I'm doing that. People in jail like, man, yeah, whatever. All right. <laughs> now I'm saying all them people, anything I said I was going to do, I did. And Sweet. them same people, literally, like, I was on Showbox within a year of me being coming home. I was in a show box within a year of me coming home from prison Crazy. and on TV. And like motherfuckers start hitting me in, like, oh, like you really doing what you said you're gonna do. Now they see me on, you know what I mean? Now mm -hmm. they they my DMs going crazy because they like them guys like, damn, bro, you really uh you made it, you da da da, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, do you ever hear man, back? Just really, you just gotta have a you gotta have a different type of focus, man, a different type of hunger and mm -hmm. a different mindset to, you know what I mean, overcome. <laughs> Definitely. The things that, that I'm that I have overcome, you know what I mean. Was it something like, like you know, a... I lost? I lost both parents. You know what I mean. Been in prison. You know what I mean. Like you got every, you got kids. I heard you got every right mm -hmm. to a person, a, 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 anybody else. I'm, I should say another per, a man, another person, probably. You know, go back. Most people, I should say, go back to the streets, or you know what I mean. Go yeah. where their comfort zone. That they go to their comfort zone, like. And me, like, I just, you know, I had stayed down. I'm like, this is something I know I want to do. This is something my mother wanted me to do. This is something I've been doing. I'm good at it. Let me get this up my 100% and give it give it up. You know what I mean? Fully focused. And let's see where it takes me. Yeah, yeah. And I did that. I stayed down with it. And, you know, it got me here now. Man, finding that. We're in a life-changing life moment right now. That's great. Yeah, it's crazy. You're witnessing it right now. Like, well, you had two life changing moments, I guess. It's like maybe you're getting signed by the show box, and then this one is the next one. It's like milestones. Yeah, so I fought on show box three times. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, this, you know, this pay per view opportunity came. You know, and most people literally, like, I have coaches and other fighters, like, bro, I don't know. You shouldn't, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Telling my coach, like, oh, y'all shouldn't take that fight. I'm like, man, they crazy. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I stayed down. You know, a lot of people feel that you can't, you can't train at home and be in shape and be fully focused. That's a lie. Because, you know, when I'm in camp and I'm training, my kids, my kids' mother, they know, like, this where is that. Everything stopped. When I go in camp, everything else frees, like, like my business, I'm lucky enough to have like my business, my salon run itself. I got a good team in there. Mm. I'm lucky to have a good team around me. But you know, far as with me, like it's strictly training, home, training, home.
kids. You know what I mean? I still have my kids, but we, you know, usually like we out kicking it. I take my kids out somewhere. We have fun or uh, something like that. But it just be training home, training home when I'm uh, in camp. Well, do you think your uh, kids are like the main factor sort of in making you smarter with money? No, it'll make you smarter with everything, with how you move, not just money. Mm -hmm. Having the kids make you smart. Even you think about every, you think everything through. Just put it like that. Mm. It's change your perspective. It make you think every, yeah, it change your perspective yeah. exactly. All right, man. Like, so do you still have people, um, or the people from prison, uh, hitting you up, telling you that you inspired them, change their life in any way, or does it not happen yeah, that often? So, because, like, as you said, like, so, I mean, like, there's so many, like, the, 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 the going back, what do you call it? Second offender, second time offenders, and you know. It's, it, there's a big tendency of people to just go back into prison after coming out because they just got used to all the convenience of oh well I'm getting food you know I don't have to hustle anymore you know there's that that side of things they say right, right right how many do you get a lot of people that have the other way around just because of your story yeah yeah I have a I have a bunch of people that um reach out still yeah. uh, you know to just say I aspire excuse me Let's say I expire them and everything like that, you know, huh? Hurry up, go up there, go to the bathroom. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Run, 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 hurry, hurry, hurry. But uh hurry, hurry, hurry. Yeah, I'm sorry. But uh a bunch of people that um that that hit me up and say that, you know what I mean? Oh, you, you seem to well you you've been as you said you were like a uh, Floyd Mayweather was like a, a big inspiration, right? And uh like to what degree does his style sort of mesh with yours? Like, how much did you model your style after him? I didn't model my style after him. Like, I love, yeah, like, I love watching him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, with any fight, any fighter, you know, any fighter, you're going, you might see something you like, and like, oh, okay, I got to take that move. You know what I mean? But, like, mimic a style, I never did that. I never mm. tried to or anything like that. That's not, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I, I might like how, you know what I mean? Like, for instance, like when I was growing up, I used to love Roy Jones too. Yeah. You know, I used to watch Roy Jones fights before my, before I fight. You know what I mean? How Roy Jones come with that leaping hook, leaping, you know what I mean? I, I, I like that shot. I come in with a leaping hook. You know what I mean? Like, it's just certain things. Like, you just, you might see something, but oh, I like that. I got to put that in the arsenal. You know what I mean? It's certain things like that, but me mimicking the style, that never happened. Pick, uh, pick, pick, and choose like small parts of each uh, of each fighter to create what's best for you. Yeah, I mean, it ain't even just me. I feel like every fighter do that. You know what I mean? Like it might, like for instance, it might be other fighters that like how I move my footwork or how I throw an uppercut or hook. it's something like that. You, you know what I mean? You just never know. It's just you know that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. That's how you continue to get better. You know what I mean? And, yep. and grow. That's how you grow when you see other things and. You can be like, oh, I like that you putting that in yours. Oh, he, I like how he did that. You putting that in yeah. yours. Like me, I ain't no hater. You know what I'm saying? Like I, ain't, I'm gonna tell you, if this is fire, I'm, uh, that was fire. That was a good ass move right there. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it probably happens automatically for me. It happens like when I'm training. It's sort of like it's in the back of your mind. I don't know if it's the same for you. It, it sort of imprints itself in your muscle memory in a way. You, like, oh, I saw that. I want to just keep. Try you know trying that move when it comes to me you know yeah yeah <laughs> so one of the things like I, I will say is uh, and I saw a video recently of you like um you do a lot of just messing around dancing sometimes in the training and I think yeah. if you're a good dancer yeah. you you can train a lot better you you a lot better boxer as well it really aids yeah, the... see see I'm not see I ain't, I ain't a good uh a good dancer like that i just have fun man. yeah but i mean me, if you've seen have you seen a bad dancer like if you see a bad dancer you know like you're on a at least a level up on them <laughs> right right no. yeah i just i just have fun with the with, with, with anything for real man that's all it's about having fun yeah like even my even that fight like i was having fun in there for real yeah because um so because before the fight i mean is there anything like is there any, what what actually there must be like some sort of fear like what what scares you before a fight usually? 
Hey, you know, so nothing, but nothing. you know, it's so crazy. Like before my fight, literally, I told my camp, I told my team, I told everybody, I'm like, I don't have no emotion, no feeling right now. Turn it around. Huh. And it's just, it was just crazy. It was crazy. But, uh, like, no, are you ready? Huh. What are you doing? I'm sorry, man. But, uh, yeah, I got, I got my little daughter right now. And she, she, you know, she, she really. That's cool. This is authentic. <laughs> we are, everyone likes authenticity yeah, yeah. online, you know. Yeah, she working right now. Look at that. Look. Here. Here. Hello. Um, I'm sorry about that. Get edited anyway. I'm not going to edit anything out, actually. Just keep it the way it is. Better. <laughs> hey, MS, authentic. Keep it right. Keep it authentic. Man, you got. Um, how, how important is representing Cleveland to you? Because. For me, I see. I think, like, I see the the biggest names of all time are people that really had a the backing. I mean, aside from people that are hated by everyone, which is pulls a lot of numbers. There's the people that have a country, a whole country behind them, a whole state, a whole city behind them. You're right. Those are the people. That, yeah. What, so yeah. Me, me representing. I'm gonna start a new one. Me representing my city. Uh, it's restarted. Um, it's it's everything. You know what I'm saying? Like my, I got a lot of kids, a lot of a lot of people that's looking up to me as. You know what I mean? That's dependent on me. You know what I mean? And mm. Cleveland, we don't we Cleveland actual Cleveland never had a champion. Like we never really had a champion. We had Sean Porter, which is from Akron, mm. which is, you know what I mean, that's 30, 45 minutes out, out from Cleveland. You know what I mean? Stop. Leave it on. That's Ohio. So. 30, yeah, yeah. It's still here. It's 30, 30, 45 minutes out from, nice. from Cleveland, but Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but he never came back home and did anything for the like that's why people respect Jake. That's why people respect Jake so much. Callie, I'm on the phone. Stop being so loud, baby. You think uh that's why people respect Jake so much because it's like it took a guy like that to bring a massive event to the city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And wait, was that the biggest event Cleveland. there was? The biggest boxing event in Cleveland? Biggest boxing event in Cleveland was that fight. Oh damn, man! Eighteen thousand, nineteen thousand people was in the arena. Yeah, you were on there, man. Yeah, huh? You were on there. Sick. Yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. And it was crazy. Like, yeah. we we never had nothing like that here. That was the first time something like that ever happened, and I was definitely a part of that. So I was definitely, you know, I'm excited, definitely excited to be a part of that right there as well. But you're saying you didn't feel any extra pressure? No, no extra pressure. Like, I think it's because my whole camp, I uh, my whole camp. I was uh, visualizing that moment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm, visualizing yeah. that moment. I was seeing it. I was every training. I was seeing it. Everything. You know what I mean? Positive manifestation. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it, it definitely played a big part for sure. Man, they'll say like, yeah, if you if you well, if you're thinking of the worst case scenario at all times, it's it's probably gonna happen more often than not. So I guess if you yeah. envision really and have confidence in your skills, and then envision the best case scenario, more often than not, that's gonna yeah. come out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Well, and and yeah, well, I noticed like in the fan questions, which we'll get to in a bit, that there was just Cleveland was uh, coming out. A lot of uh, yeah. Cleveland people yeah, asking man, uh, yeah. Cleveland questions. Yeah. yeah, if you was in there, if you was in there in that stadium that night, man, it was amazing. Like it was electrifying in there. It was crazy. I can imagine, man. Already through the yeah. through the headphones, it already like uh, sounded crazy. What are you listening to, actually? What are you listening to before fights, pre-fight? Um, what high school? Different. Yeah. Or do you more? Really, really just depends on the moment. You know what I mean? Like, how I'm feeling at that moment. I, you know, I might listen to some rap. I might listen to some R&B. I might listen to It depends on the moment. My biggest thing always in a fight is staying relaxed. Hmm. Never panic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even when you get hit with big shots, you got to stay relaxed. You got to be smart. Yeah. And... That's my thing. Like I'm a thinker in the ring. You know what I mean? Mm. And uh, you know, that's all I that's all I try to do is just stay relaxed and you know. Like where where and how so, did you comp- like learn how to compose yourself like that then? Uh, I mean it's just mental stress. It ain't like where you know, like I said, I'd have been in prison. So you gotta learn how to right. you know have patience and stay relaxed. Yeah. And you know, I guess that's why I say I feel like every everything in my life happened for a reason, man. Yeah, which uh, lessons from prison really helped you in your boxing the most, your boxing career, you think? What lessons, life lessons that I learned? 
Yeah, like, the it, thing, the most, the most I learned and got out of prison is having patience. Patience, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's it. Most, that's most and biggest thing I learned from prison is having patience, you know? The same with uh, patience in your boxing career, yeah, okay. Yeah. Patience in the fight, maybe? Is it? Yeah. Huh? Patience in the fight, patience in your fighting career. To not maybe chasing that killer shot too soon, you know, they always say if you're really looking yeah, for the yeah. KO and chasing it, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Let it come to yeah. you. You got to have patience. Let it come. It's going to happen. Yeah. Just got to set it up. What? You got to have the right, the smarts to set, to set it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 What are you playing? Yeah. Matt, and right now I'm smoking him. Look, as we speak, ah, he just called me. Yeah. Uh, I don't really play the game much. All I do is. Like I like play them like in Madden or 2K here and there. Mm, yep. That's all I play is Madden 2K. I don't play nothing else. Well, if you're any good, you can start. Well, you don't even need to be good, man. Start a start a Twitch channel. Start another revenue stream. Why not? Start. Yeah, right. Start. I don't know how to do that though. Like, well, I mean, once you got someone um, setting it up the first time, you can just learn from it. Yeah, that'd be fun. I'm mad because I was just about to score, man. He caught me. I was just gone like 70, 80 yards. Come on. <laughs> Well, that's what maybe oh, you can't put the phone on the screen. No, let's see what let's see what's going on. Oh, you want to see what's going, see on, what's right going on? I'm about to score. I'm close. I right, flip the camera. Oh, shit. Let's see this moment. Right, this is a I'm glorious, to... a very important moment. In... Yeah, so like I'm right here. Oh I'm man, right in the I'm end right zone. Right here by the score. Hold on, let me see if I can. How can I see? Well, I, I don't want to either. I would also don't want to ruin your uh, your play. Yeah. I'm about to score right now. Right. Oh shit! He called me. Hold on. I mean, audible. I'm out of, I don't know. I, the whole outside was open. Oh. Watch the touchdown right here. Here go the touchdown right here. Catch this on camera. See it, man. And I'm going to zoom uh -oh. into that. Boom, right the... there. Touchdown. Oh, shit. Touchdown. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, sir. There we you go. Know what yeah, you got the Saints. Yeah. See, I, I know something about I know something about football. You say you know something I know about something. Football. I know that's the Saints. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know what's funny? The Saints, he, he Kansas City. I... So the only thing I bet on in football is the Super Bowl. I make a couple of bets, and now really? like six Super Bowls in a row, I've won. And I don't even really? watch the sport. Yeah, I just look at statistics that day. I look at like I, I read up on it that day. <laughs> Plays the bet. Wow, and it's crazy. Like I even got one on um, what's the name? Suchek, who scored a touchdown. Like two. Yeah, yeah man. Like you gotta you gotta oh, win you back. Like the fantasy football stuff. Not at all. Like no. No, and I don't, yeah, because football isn't really big, uh, big here, huh? In the in Amsterdam, so. Do it be boxer fights out there? Boxing in Holland. And do it be a lot of fights out there, in Amsterdam? Uh, no, 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 no. There's uh kick the kickboxing. The K one is a uh, huge glory. Is huge, you know, uh, kickboxing. Um, got Butter Hari. Uh, we got uh, Rico Verhoeven, champion. Um, MMA is getting bigger. Got a couple of MMA guys, yeah. people, but you know, boxing. This for me, you know, that was it. Shock. I grew up in the Middle East. Huh? I'm half Jordanian, you know. Um, okay. And so I came from, from like I, I was first. I did Taekwondo, and then I switched to boxing. It was boxing, and when I first came here, it's um, it's funny. Like you go to these gyms, and I'm doing pad work, and this guy suddenly throws like, "Hey, throw a kick." I'm like, "Wait, wow. what?" <laughs> There's not much um, boxing. It's growing though. I'm, of course, I'm we got pissed, boxing gyms. Well, first one, which kind of answered. Uh, Seb Fertina says, that's my boy. Uh, what does it say about the state of boxing when Jake Paul and co are dominating news? So, oh, you said they would do a say to boxing when they dominate news? Yeah, they're saying, what does it say yeah, about the state good. of boxing? It's good for them. You know what I mean? That's good. Like, they, they ain't doing nothing wrong. They, you know what I mean? Like I say. Mm-hmm. Cahoots to them, man. Keep it going. I'm proud for them. Happy for them. If someone is not happy about it, just stop buying the pay-per-views. Right. Anything I want to be says, what fight do you think tested your skills the most? Uh, what Which fight tested my skills? My last one, for sure. I mean, at mm -hmm. the same time, like, the thing is, it's, it's, uh, it's, the, the higher my comp, like I'm one of those fighters, and I'm trying to get out of that. The better my opponent, the better I fight. I'm trying to get out of that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just be like, I don't know, like just dominate at all every fight. But 
it's it's kind of hard because it's like when you fighting somebody trash or <laughs> somebody that you know what I'm saying that don't belong. Oh, I don't so know. It's, it's hard just, to motivate yourself for that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it's like you know he can't he can't fuck with me. Like so, you you yeah. tend to relax a bit more. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people like the same. Like Tyson Fury had this uh, tune-up fight before uh, facing Deontay, like uh, the second time I think. Got the the nasty cut. Didn't look as good as usual, probably because um, yeah. he thought it could smoke the guy easy. It was it was in second gear the whole time. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see the same with like uh, sports teams that face a uh, like a weak opponent before a playoff game or something like that, right before the playoffs. Brendan underscore Burns 13 says, what's better, the east or west side of Cleveland? East side. What's about, wh what about it? East side is just a lot better regard, like just period. It's, it's more, I mean, west side is just more of a, what about to say, uh, east side, east side is, it's just, it's just better, period. Like west yeah. side, weird. It's weird over there. Kidnappings and everything come on the west side. Oh, damn. Me. And Zaid underscore Salem eleven. Are you still obsessed with candy or sweets? Yeah, still. Yeah. I got better, but yeah, I'm still. I'm still. Does it help you get more disciplined in camp? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like keep sure. getting to eat this if I work harder. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a fact. So I'm actually like right now. I'm starting my meal preps and everything early before my next fight. So hmm. keeping my way down. Speaking of next fights, well, first. Walt Nimda, how will you follow up on the momentum from your last win? Uh, you know, staying in the gym, staying active, being active, in which it's about, to, you know, I'm about to be um, a big, like I said, a big announcement coming soon. Well, I saw you calling out Tank, so wouldn't have anything to do with uh -huh. that, would it? You were calling out Tank? Is that the next yeah, one you want, or you want another step first before you face him? I know you sparred him, right? Big announcement coming soon, champ. All right, I'll give uh, you the, the last one. John, too mad. If I start boxing at 15, can I go pro by 18? Yeah. Go pro whenever you like. Mm -hmm. Keeping that O is a different story. You can yeah, go pro whenever you want. Sure. I mean, it's like you got the guy Tommy Fury, you know? He's got... Um, yeah. One of his opponents early on, I think his first opponent was like ten and hundred and two. Have you ever heard, seen or heard of a record like that? <laughs> yeah, ten and a hundred and two. Yeah, like what are you doing? What? Yeah, I never heard of that. <laughs> I want to meet that guy though. Maybe I should get him on the show. The the ten and a hundred and two guy. Yeah, that's a lot of experience. Yeah, that's a whole lot of experience. A lot of CTE. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, man. Sure. So. I appreciate it, though. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Good luck. All right. Have a good one. Have a good one. Yeah.